Hi, Tracy from Salem, coming back to work on my memory cloth. Um, I did spend some large amount of time last weekend attempting to <laughs> do a video of uh, some of this work I was doing here, and I just I just kept messing it up, and finally I got quite exasperated. Um, so I have done a fair amount of work since the last time I showed this piece. Um, you can't see all of it on the camera. Um, but I put in this section here uh, and with sari and uh, completed putting, um, doing couching around these pieces down here. Uh, I put in this strip here at the bottom of the sky. Um, and I put in this, <clears throat> excuse me, I, I uh, put in the stitching and the couching here and here. Um, so let's see, I will zoom in a little bit here um, on these areas. And I did put in some symbols for my dream. This is a memory cloth. If this is the first time you're seeing this, this is a memory cloth of a journey, um, a shamanic journey uh, that I took. Um, so uh, the memory cloth idea comes from like my favorite book, <laughs> Expressive Stitches by Jan Dawson, which I've referenced many times. Um, and I've been working on this cloth for a couple months. Um, so I put in the, this eyelash thread and I did all this couching here um, and put in some beading. So just to zoom out again. Um, these panels are, are pretty close to done. I need, I need to put some, thing, some things here um, and then do some couching around this. I'm going to use um, this sari around this panel. And I think I'm still trying to decide if I'm gonna twist up maybe this sari and use it or, um, or use this sari along the top here. But today what I'm doing is putting in um, a representation of my guide on this journey, which was Egret. Um, now I've, I have already once done this Egret for my um, Roxy's Journal of Stitchery. Uh, I think it was the May panel. <clears throat> so I had already done this once and I had already kind of worked out like what, what I wanted to do differently um, to, uh, you know, make it better. Um, and so I just finished uh, stitching this pattern um, and now I'm going to um, applique it onto my night sky, um, which I had a lot of fun doing. Uh, it's, you know, it's definitely a, a riff on um, Van Gogh's Starry Night. I loved putting in different pieces of fiber, uh, you know, textile, and then uh, using different colors to stitch on it. Um, it's much more subtle, obviously, than his, you know, color-wise, it's much more subtle than his um, Starry Night Sky, uh, or the kind of sky he does in a lot of his work, that swirly sky that is just screams Van Gogh. Um, that's my version. Um, and it was a lot of fun to do. Um, and I've got sort of, you know, my list of work dwells and do differentlies. Um, as you know, I love to do if you've watched this channel at all. So <clears throat> I'm going to applique this down now. And um, yeah, that's what I'm doing today. So I've got a couple needles threaded up already. Maybe I'm gonna put this yeah, over here. Um, and I guess I should probably uh, zoom in. Well, first I want to get the placement, which, and it's a little bit hard to place because I've got, I've got this extra, 
as part of the, oh, I don't know if you can hear my stomach rumbling. <laughs> that was loud. Um, I think, well, let's see, maybe I want it a little higher. Higher or lower. And maybe I want more of this showing. Um, I'm a little less enamored of these colors. Uh, you know, when I was doing the sky, obviously I was trying to gradate and you know how when it's sunset, there's kind of a strip of bright color at the bottom and then it gets darker and darker, um, which is what I was going for. Um, but I'm not maybe super pleased with these colors. And so maybe I want to cover them a little more and show a little more of this. Although, you know, if I'd plan this out better. So, you know, here, here's one of my work dwells. I mean, sorry, one of my do differentlys, right? This is gonna get covered, whether I put it up here or down here, this is really gonna get covered. So do differently might have been to move this up, which is to decide on the placement of this first and then, um, and then have done my needlework accordingly. And so this might've been moved up a little bit so it would show more, you know, but do differently for next time. So I think I am going to put it a little bit lower in the sky. But of course, not as much is going to get covered as it seems like because this will be turned under. Um, maybe I'm going to put it even lower. I think that's too low because then he doesn't quite seem like he's flying in the sky, right? Um, There's a certain symmetry to that placement that feels uh, good in, in a sense of in a sense of balance. Um, and I could put something along here to, you know, help me like it better. <laughs> I could do that. Um, I could, in fact, put some swirls down here. Well, let's see. I feel like that is the placement that feels kind of like there's symmetry and balance. And Yeah, and unfortunately that means a lot of this is gonna get covered. Um, and it means I'll need to come back in here, I think, and do something. And I don't know what that is right now. Well, I could just do this all day, couldn't I? Let's try to make a decision, Blanchard. Yeah, I, th I think that's what feels right. All right. So now I will adjust the camera based on that. Now, probably should pin that. Uh, I really hate using pins because um, the thread just constantly gets caught on them. And I don't want it to wobble around. I've certainly uh, not used pins and then had something kind of come out crooked. Um, Which is, feels very newbie to me. <laughs> I'm trying to, I, I realize I have a long way to go before I'm a really fine um, stitcher, but I am trying to like <laughs> learn. That's why I do my work dwells and do differently, right? So I can actually learn uh, 
from my um, challenging moments. Which is a nice, the nice way of saying mistakes. I don't really think there are mistakes, but um, the word mistake is the word that leaps to mind when I've like spent a lot of time and effort doing something and then I, and then it's only to discover it's sort of crooked or something like that. <clears throat> so I can see actually right now that these wings are not actually, they're a little bit off balance, a little bit off kilter. And they're not stitched perfectly evenly, that's fine, but that was kind of quite off kilter. So, yeah, so I would say like, this is probably one of the things, one of the places where um, I need to focus some energy is that I just get very excited and I plunge into things. And I don't kind of just stop and be thoughtful and really look, are those wings, uh, Now see, it's something about pinning them down that seems to kind of throw them off. This is why I hate pinning. All right, because I can pin and pin and pin and it still seems off kilter to me. I mean, I just keep, it just keeps happening. Where is like, I put the pin in and it seems to somehow shift. <clears throat> and then I get exasperated. And then I just say, oh, screw it. <laughs> Pardon my language. And I just start stitching and um, patience. <laughs> my mother loves to remind me of, um, of something my first grade teacher used to say, which I'm sure is just not something she made up, but is like some common aphorism of her time. <clears throat> Patience is a virtue, virtue is a grace, both put together make a very pretty face. Um, so I'm not even gonna start down the road of uh, like um, how damaging that is to women being taught very early that what matters is their pretty face. But let's just move through that and talk about making a pretty um, piece, of, piece of artwork, fiber work. Uh, so patience here is the key to making the piece be beautiful in the way that I want it to be beautiful. Yeah, I think that aphorism just needs to be retired, right? <laughs> I, I can't remember the last time I actually said that to myself. And as I said it to myself, I was cringing. So the other thing I want to do is like around here, I want to cut, um, cut into where there's going to be corners and turning and stuff to make it easy. So I, I want to cut up to but not on my stitches so that they can turn. Uh, more easily, like so. Now corners also have, the, you have the problem of all this stuff folding around itself and creating a big pile and, uh, so I think the corners, it's better to do the corners sort of later in the process. Um, so I'm gonna turn this and make sure that I'm still on camera because I have a really bad habit of going off camera. And then I just start to turn each flap and I just focus on that little part there. So what I used to, um, making sure I'm still on camera. 
what I used to create the lines was a um, stem stitch and I'm going to just use that stem stitch again to do this applique. Well, not, not quite a stem, stem stitch, but the applique stitch and the stem stitch aren't too far apart from each other. So I just want to go, I want to go to keep it hidden and not have stitches out here. I'm going to go like underneath the fabric and take just a very small bite and then come it in, come up in my stem stitches. <clears throat> So I'm gonna go like under to really hide that stitch and take a, just a small bite, very small bite. So talk about patience. Um, the applique stitch, uh, for my experience, is that if I wanna do it well, I have to go slow and I have to take very small stitches um, because I really want to hide um, the stitch under the piece so that I don't have a lot of stitches showing on this part. I also have to be very careful as you can see this um, sheer cloth that I used. Um, what I did was I took this sheer cloth uh, um, oh gosh what do you call it a sheer curtain that I bought at the, like at the thrift store. Um, and then I put it on top of just this very uh, white, I don't even know, linen or cotton, or I don't even know what it is, calico, it's calico, uh, uh, to give it some sturdiness as I stitched my design. You can see that the curtain um, frays very easily and you can see it's like all coming off on here. So I have to just be very careful as I'm stitching not to encourage any more fraying. <clears throat> uh, so let's see. And I'm just using my fingers and my needle to turn this under. Now I really want the edges of the um, feathers to be, so there's space between these two that I really want to tuck under because I really want the edges of the feathers to be sharp. And I may need to cut a little bit. <laughs> the cutting is so nerve wracking because I really don't wanna cut the stitches that I used to create, and I don't want to cause a lot of fraying. So I just got to go really, really slowly. And of course this needle, this pen, right in the way. Now I'm almost doing like an overstitch instead of like the applique stitch so as to really try to bind that edge where I just cut so that it doesn't fray. I 
Ugh, and this is why I hate pins, because it just keep they keep getting stuck. The thread keeps getting stuck on the pins. Not only is the fabric quite delicate, but it's quite delicate thread as well. It's a uh, this pearl, but it's super. It's you know it's like lace weight, or I don't know. I, I, that's what I would call it if it was um, knitting yarn. But I don't know what you call that thread, uh, like a thread. But <clears throat> it it feels lace weight to me. That's the that's the descriptor I'm going to use. So you see um, each of these little corners. I've got to really try to cut in here so I can fold it under without cutting. <clears throat> so I think what I need here is this helpful tool because my fingers are just a bit too bulky to really get in there and turn it under in the way that it needs to be turned under. This is a lot to manage, and I can see that it's going to take me quite a lot of time to do, so I'm not going to make you watch <laughs> all of this stitching, but I just wanted to come in and show the progress um, on this piece, this memory cloth. and. Um, so I'm just going to continue on with that, and um, I'm having a lot of fun because I've, I've been spending a lot of time learning the stitches from Sue Spargo's book because I'm going to her stitch retreat in like two weeks, wow. Um, and this has just been a great, uh, like I'm loving learning the ropes and learning the rules and learning the stitches really well through Sue, Sue Spargo and like her circles and whatnot. Um, I've got some here on my practice cloth um, that I've been working on. Um, and it's been super fun and I'm really enjoying it. But like, this is not really my style. I mean, th this is my style of Sue Spargo because this doesn't really look like what she does. Um, but, uh, you know, th just creating circles is not you know, or she does flowers and whatnot. That's, that's really what I'm interested in. But, I, but I'm but i learning the, the rules, so to speak, right? Like the way you learn rules of grammar so that you can break them better. And this cloth is where I can come and do my, things that interest me personally um, with those stitches. Um, so, yeah, so I'm, so I, I'm doing both the things. Um, and here's where things stand with the memory cloth. So I, I encourage you to um, try making a memory cloth. It's really a wonderful, wonderful experience. Um, and um, yeah, I'll see you next time.